Good afternoon, everyone. We are excited you are able to join us today to learn more about the Jack Kent Cook Foundation's Young Scholars Program. Whether you're an educator wanting to learn more about this opportunity for your students, a parent interested in having your child apply, or a student who thought this sounded like a good opportunity, we are so glad you're joining us. My name is Cindy Ayala, and I am part of AVID's marketing team. I would like to introduce my co-host, Alan Royal, who is the Director of Outreach and Partnerships at the Jack Kent Cook Foundation. We have a few more AVID team members joining us, Abby Dorsey, who is supporting with the chat, and Brian Lee, who is helping with tech support. During this webinar, Alan will give us an overview of the Young Scholars Program, and we will wrap up with a question and answer session. We will record this webinar and send you a link so you can rewatch it or share it with anyone who is not able to attend today. Before we hear from Alan, we wanted to share a short video about the Young Scholars Program. The Cook Foundation Young Scholars Program is a life-changing opportunity. The program is a selective five-year pre-college scholarship for high-performing seventh grade students with financial need and is a pathway to the $40,000 per year Cook College Scholarship. Being a Cook Scholar has meant absolutely everything. It opened up a new door in my life. The foundation is the single most important factor in my high school and college education. Scholars are provided comprehensive academic and college advising, as well as the opportunity to explore potential careers through summer programs, internships, and mentorships. I could not believe I read that. I'm like, that's a fairy tale. That's not real. I could say everything, and that would be true. I could say peace of mind, and that would be true. What it has meant is opportunity. I did so many great things as a young scholar, traveled abroad. The foundation has brought me to new environments, new challenges, things that I never thought I'd even be remotely interested in. I've always wanted to do more, but I haven't had the resources available. In addition, scholars are welcomed into the thriving community of Cook Scholars. I feel each time I come back here, I tell myself I'm going to see my family again. There are so many different faces, so many different voices. You can go through your list and if you see JKCF, you know that you can click them and call them and they're going to help you. There are people that believe in me. And for me that's really a connection and a bond that I haven't really experienced anywhere else. We all have a certain thing that makes us connected as Jack Kent Cook scholars. I wish that every kid in the United States could experience this. Thank God we did not throw this application away. Please visit our website now to find out more and start your application today. Now I'd like to have Alan share a little bit more about the Young Scholars Program. Alan, take it away. Abby and Brian for being here to support. So uh, thank you also everyone who is attending with us this afternoon. My name is Alan Royal and I'm Director of Outreach and Partnerships at the Jack Kent Cook Foundation. And I'm going to share my screen so you can see some slides that I have that will guide my talk today. So I think you all can see the, the photo with Think Big, Work Hard and Achieve now. Um, but again, want to, I think first, just tell you a little bit about the Jack Kent Cook Foundation in case you're not familiar with the foundation or haven't heard of it before. We are a nonprofit scholarships organization based in Northern Virginia, right outside of the Washington DC metro area. And we um, are dedicated to advancing the education of promising students who have financial need. And we do that primarily through the scholarship programs that we have and the scholarships that we award. And again, today I'm going to talk to you about the Young Scholars Program which is a program designed to support students throughout their high school journey and uh, allow them to pursue many good opportunities in terms of promoting their academics and hopefully preparing them for a college experience and getting into the college of their choice and moving through their higher education as well. So I'll tell you, um, 
just a little bit about the experience of the program to get started so you can sort of understand what it is. Um, there are really three main components to the program. Um, and so the first one that I like to talk about that I feel is probably the most important or the most critical aspect of the program is the advising. So all of the students who become Cook Young Scholars have the opportunity to work with an educational advisor. This person connects with them one-on-one, -on -one, meets them, meets their family, their school um, teachers, counselors, and personnel, and really supports them throughout that time during in the program and helping them formulate academic goals for themselves as well as think about the ways in which the foundation can support them in reaching those goals through the scholarship funding. And then, of course, it is a scholarship program, and so there is financial support that comes along with being accepted as a Cook Young Scholar. Um, and so we have a scholarship budget that, again, is formulated in collaboration with the educational advisor. And I'll talk more about the types of things that the scholarship can support in a couple of slides, but just know that that is obviously a very important component to the experience that you're getting um, during the program. And then finally, the scholar community. And so when you become a Cook Young Scholar, you join others at the same time who are welcomed into the program in that same year. And you also are connected to other young scholars that are older in older grades and you do activities together. We host events where we invite scholars out to uh, get to know each other and participate in various activities. And then you're also able to meet each other when you participate in programs such as summer opportunities, opportunities to study abroad, internships, and many other potential opportunities that will allow you to get to know other scholars, network with those scholars and, and find where those commonalities exist and how you can support each other on your journey throughout high school and into college. So what to expect from the educational advising piece, I think is really important to kind of determine if you feel like this is an opportunity you really want to apply for. The educational advisor, again, is a person that works on staff at the foundation, um, and each advisor has a caseload of about 30 to 40 students that they work with um, and essentially get to know them and try to understand what they want to accomplish during their time in high school, what their career interests might be long term, and you may not necessarily have a, an idea of what you want to pursue, but that advisor is going to help guide your thought process in figuring that out and is going to help connect you to um, activities and opportunities that will support you getting to know more about that field, gaining experience through programming in that field, and then again, of course, preparing you to uh, apply for college and think about um, how you can prepare to enter that field and that major while you're in college. And as I mentioned before, with the scholarship funding itself, the advisor is the person that helps determine what that funding is going to go towards. And so they work on creating what we call individualized learning plans. And essentially all that is, is a four-year plan where they sit down and literally map out the different things that you say you want to try to take advantage of, advantage of in the program. Um, and so they're doing that, and then they're also helping to facilitate those opportunities to connect with other students who may have similar interests. Um, they're hosting group meetings online and, you know, hangouts online where students have the opportunity to talk to each other, interact with each other, share their dreams and their goals, um, and again, be there to support each other as they encounter various challenges and um, successes during their academic journey. Okay, what types of things does the scholarship funding support? So this is just a, a short list of a few items that typically students will take advantage of while they're in the Young Scholars Program. 
one of the main components that's a requirement uh, for the program is that each student attends a summer program every summer during their time in high school. So this will be an opportunity for the student to, again, work with the advisor and determine, you know, what would I like to spend a little bit more time investigating and learning about? And so if you haven't been to a summer program before or a summer camp, this is, you know, essentially an opportunity for you to go for a couple of weeks, two or three weeks, maybe to a college campus or to some other location that might be close to home or it might be, you know, on the other side of the country potentially. Um, and you're able to stay there and really dive into that experience, immerse yourself in this thing that you have said that you're interested in and learn more about it to determine if you want to continue on that path. Or maybe you learn that it's, you know, not the perfect choice for you, but it's an opportunity, again, to experience something new and to really dive deeper into your interests. So this is one of the, again, required aspects um, that we do support. But you see there are several other opportunities, potentially, of things that could get funded. So students may decide that they want to sign up for an online course. Maybe there is a course that is not offered at their local school that they're really interested in that they could take online. We also have students that will do dual enrollment courses at local community colleges. Uh, so really looking outside of the scope of just what's available in your school and finding ways to supplement that um, through these other potential course opportunities. And then I love to talk about the fact that it's not only academic oriented, but there are opportunities to get more experience with your extracurricular interests. So if you're a musician or an artist or a dancer or an athlete, uh, you can have the opportunity to receive lessons or um, any other sort of support systems that might be in place to help you get better at this particular skill um, and get more experience in this thing that you're passionate about. And then we also support different materials that you might need. So if you're in need of things like a laptop or a graphing calculator. And those things might not um, necessarily be very affordable. We could sort of, sur sort of supplement the cost of that within the individualized learning plan as well, and make sure that you have all those tools that you need to be successful inside the classroom. Uh, and then many other students will also do things like go to conferences, do competitions like debate or robotics or um, you know, history day fair, all of these different things that you may have had some experience with already or that you may have heard of. We really want to encourage students to take advantage of these opportunities and support them financially if needed in those ways. So these are just, again, is a short list. The, the great thing about the program is, again, it's very individualized. And so as you work with your advisor, you have the opportunity to introduce new ideas and new possibilities for things that you may want to spend time doing. And you can work with your advisor to decide if that's something that the foundation could support during your time in the program. And so what is the community like uh, is, is, a, is the next question to sort of talk in more detail about and how do you get to know each other in this community? So I mentioned that we host events. On this slide, you see the three sort of main events that we host. So when students first become a part of the Young Scholars Program during the summer following their eighth grade year, uh, we invite them all to an event that we call Welcome Weekend. We invite the student plus parent to come join the foundation staff for about three to four days. And we just go through sort of an orientation of everything that they're going to be expected to pursue and, and get to know the different staff members so they can start to feel comfortable with the way the program is going to work. And so it's a really fun weekend. It's hosted on a college campus typically. So we've had the event on Johns Hopkins University's campus. We've had it on the University of Pennsylvania's campus. I believe this upcoming summer will be at Northwestern University. So um, it's a really great chance to see a college campus also you know, before you really are at that point where you're applying to college, you kind of get the opportunity to see what it's like and, and navigate that campus. 
Um, so Welcome Weekend is a, is a really amazing event and one where we, we hope that everyone gets comfortable with what the program is going to be. And then the first summer program is your first summer program experience. So I mentioned that we require students to attend a summer program. That first summer program, every student who is new to the program attends it together. So, um, and foundation staff members are also present during that time as well. So this is important because many times families may uh, be allowing their students to, you know, go to a summer program for the first time and doing it as a group and as a community of young scholars really helps to ease some of the concerns and the reluctance that might be, uh, you might be experiencing about that and get to sort of get that guided experience for how to engage at a summer program during that first one. And then finally, before the summer of their senior year in high school, the entire cohort of students that was selected together comes together one more time for a summer program experience. And that particular experience is really focused on the college process because they're preparing to submit applications, finalize their college list for where they wanna submit applications and really think about that process deeply, start to apply for financial aid, um, and so they get support very specifically around the college process, but they're also at this point, they have hopefully come to a little bit more of a understanding about what they may want to uh, pursue career-wise. And so they have the opportunity to take part in an independent research project focused on their interests, their academic interests. So Senior Summit is a really awesome experience too, a sort of multifaceted experience that brings the cohort back together right before their senior year of high school. So these are just the in-person events that I've mentioned. Again, throughout your time in high school, you're also involved in long distance um, hangouts online. There will be other opportunities for in-person events regionally um, where you have uh, other scholars that may be in your city or nearby cities. And so there's lots of different events that are organized throughout the time that you're in the program. Okay, and then this is one of the really key highlights of becoming a young scholar um, in terms of the continuing support that you could potentially receive. So if you are selected as a young scholar and you participate in the program um, during your senior year, you'll also have the opportunity to apply for a college scholarship from the foundation. Um, so this is a really nice opportunity to receive up to $55,000 per year for four years to attend any accredited college or university in the United States. So we don't um, you know, have any requirements about which college you attend or any requirements about what your area of study is, because again, the, the purpose of the advising and your participation in the program is for you to figure that out for yourself and build your own interests. And then the foundation wants to continue to support you throughout college in making sure that you get through with as little debt as possible. Um, so it really is an opportunity ultimately to receive basically eight years of support, which is, you know, really, really great. Okay, so I kind of spent that time telling you about the program experience. Uh, now I want to shift gears and talk about how you can access this opportunity. Uh, so some of you may have already looked at the application or you might not have you know, any idea about it and this is your first time hearing about it. So the, the, the main thing that you wanna know is whether or not you'd be eligible to apply. So students who are eligible need to currently be in seventh grade. Um, it's okay if you're not and you're thinking about it for a future year, that's great too. Uh, so if you're a sixth grader and you're thinking about next year, you can plan for it. But if you're in seventh grade right now, um, the application is open right now. And we'll talk about that in a second, too. But you would want to apply this year because that's the only time that you can apply for the program. Um, and then we, we expect you to have earned all A's and B's in sixth and seventh grade. So we'll look at your report card from sixth grade and we'll look at that first half of the seventh grade year. Because, again, the application is open now, so you won't have finished seventh grade just yet. Um, and we'll, you know, expect you to have A's and B's on your report card. And then um, residing in the United States, 
um, and planning to attend high school in the United States. And then finally, demonstrating unmet financial need. And so how we determine that at the point of your application is we ask you to self-report your family's income. And if your family earns up to $95,000 a year, you will be eligible to apply. So that's the, the maximum income that a family can earn in order to be eligible to become a young scholar. Um, so keep that in mind as well. You'll wanna have that conversation with your family and make sure that you're financially eligible. Um, so the three things to think about, again, for eligibility, currently in seventh grade, if you wanna apply this year, um, and then all A's and B's in your classes since the beginning of sixth grade, and then the income of no more than $95,000 annually. And then once you know if you're eligible, the next question you might have is, what, are you, what is the foundation looking for in applicants? When I, when I start to work on the application, what are the things that are going to be evaluated? So these are our selection criteria that we look at for, you know, that we're looking for within the application. Um, academic achievement is at the top of this list. So we talked about having all A's and B's. We're gonna ask you about that. You're also going to get teacher recommendations and we're gonna ask you some questions that you'll, some essay questions that you'll respond to in the application also. And we'll just want to learn a little bit more about, you know, what excites you about school? You know, what are you really interested in learning about? Um, and sort of what are the ways that you have taken advantage of opportunities to learn more and to, to again, really just immerse yourself in the things that you're interested in academically. We also uh, look at leadership. And what we mean by leadership is we want students who are taking initiative to uh, serve others. And so they're involved in their community, they're involved um, on their campuses at school. They may have roles within their family dynamic where they're helping younger siblings or helping older family members, grandparents. There's so many different ways that students can demonstrate the way that they lead and that they take initiative in their lives. And so you will have the opportunity to Tell us about that in one of the essay questions that you respond to. And the third criteria is persistence. And what we mean by persistence is students who are goal setters. So you may not, again, have a lot of concrete goals for yourself at this point. You may um, still be thinking through the different things that you want to do and that you're interested in, but there will be opportunities to tell us about those things that you're thinking about. Uh, so we want to see your aspirations and what, you, what you're thinking about. And also, we're asking questions about how you've responded to different challenges that may have popped up in your life. So that could be in school, right? Maybe there is a class that was more challenging than others that you had to seek some additional support in making sure that you did well in that class. Um, or maybe there's a personal challenge that you dealt with um, at home or in your own life that you really had to figure out, how am I going to, you know, respond to this or how am I going to get through this? Uh, so we want to hear you tell us about that because that helps us get a sense of how you respond whenever things get a little tough or, you know, are just not perfectly smooth sailing, because that's really important in all aspects of life. Um, and especially, I think, in pursuing your education as you move closer to college and pursue your higher education is, you know, how am I going to get the support that I need when things are not, you know, perfect? So these are the three primary selection criteria, again, academic achievement, leadership and persistence. And the things that we ask in our application point to these three criteria. Okay, what does the application consist of? So this slide shows the different components of the application that we will ask you to complete. You, of course, will tell us, you know, basic information about yourself, your contact information, name, et cetera, and your parents will do the same. So they'll tell us a little, about, a little bit about themselves, their employment, 
um, and different the household dynamics um, at your house and things like that. Just so, again, we have a sense of what type of family you are and where your areas of need might be. Um, and then again, we will ask for the report cards. So you would upload those report cards to the application um, online. And then recommendations from a couple of teachers. So this is important to think about in advance um, because you're gonna want to ask two of your teachers, either from sixth grade or seventh grade, to essentially submit a recommendation form for you. And the way you do this is, in the online application, you would simply input their email address and our system will send them an email um, inviting them to submit a recommendation form for you. One piece of advice I would give for students who are thinking about doing the application is, you know, go ahead and ask your teachers now. Um, let them know that you're interested in applying and give them sort of a heads up that you know, you want to do this and that you would like for them to submit the recommendation for you. That way they can be expecting to receive the email after you've input their email address and know to look for it in their inbox and be prepared to, to submit it in a timely fashion. So, so be in communication with those teachers that you're interested in having write a recommendation for you. There's also a section where you can tell us more about your extracurricular activities. So again, it's academic focused, but we wanna know the other things that you're doing also. So if you're an athlete and you play basketball or volleyball or track, if you are involved in, again, any STEM related competition such as robotics um, or really anything that you're involved in, we want you to tell us about that. Um, and we also wanna know if you've received any honors, you know, maybe you received honor roll um, or maybe you've received special awards at school or outside of school that are honoring you for um, really being, you know, exceptional or unique in, in a particular way. We want to hear about that. So you'll have the opportunity to tell us those and list those awards as well. Um, and then I mentioned the essays. So there will be three short response essays that you will complete. So they're 150 words or less. So not long, you won't have to write pages and pages, but more like a paragraph or two. And then there's one longer essay that I believe the maximum is 250 or 300 words. So closer to like a full page essay, like a five paragraph essay. Um, and so you'll want to, you know, Think about your responses. One piece of advice I would give for writing the essays is to start working on them outside of the application portal online um, because you may uh, need to save your work and come back to it later. And you can do that in the application, but just to be safe, I think it's a good idea to start working on them outside of the application. And then when you finish, you can always copy and paste them into the online portal. Um, and then finally, we will again ask you to self-report your income. And so want to make note of the fact that when you submit your application, you are telling us your income and there won't be any documents that you need to submit at that time to verify your income. Um, so we don't ask for that at the point of submitting the application, but for students who move forward in our review process, and are potentially up to receive the scholarship award, we will reach back out and contact you and your family and ask you to submit some documents to verify your income. So that'll come later in the process. You don't have to worry about that initially. Just be sure to, again, connect with your parents and be sure and get an accurate um, income for your family for the last three years that you would just type into the application when you're working to submit it. All right, so I went through that a little faster than I thought I would, um, but this last slide really is just to display how you can learn a little bit more um, about the application. Um, so if you want to jot down these websites and these social media handles, you can. As Cindy mentioned, this will be recorded, so you can always refer back to it as well. Um, but just so you know, we have a lot of great information on the website. Um, so you can visit that and learn more about the program, 
We have uh, a blog section on our site where we talk about the different things that our scholars are currently involved in and doing. So it talks about you know, where they've gone to school and what areas of um, career that they've pursued. So that's fun to look at and you may find something that really interests you or inspires you to wanna submit the application even more. Uh, and then we do have social media as well. So you can find the, the foundation on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And again, you'll see that same type of content. We try to post scholar stories primarily. Um, and then we post information about the application. So you know when it's open um, and essentially how to, you know, access that and complete it. Um, and Again, so I didn't say this yet, and this is very important. Uh, the application is open now. It's open until May 11th. Um, so you've got about two more months to think about applying and get that application submitted if you're interested in this. And if you have questions about it, you can email us at the email address scholarships at jkcf.org. And we try to respond to all of those questions within a couple of business days. Um, and I know Cindy and, and the team at Avid also made themselves available to respond to questions as well. So we really want to support you if you feel like this is an opportunity that you want to, to try to get. So wanted to say that. And then in terms of timeline, just, you know, to, to give you full disclosure on what to expect if you do submit the application, the deadline's May 11th. And then we work all summer to review the applications. And we notify the recipients in early fall. So if you submitted an application, you would find out around the time you're beginning eighth grade, your eighth grade year of whether or not you received it. So that's the timeline in terms of getting everything submitted. The deadline is May 11th, and then you will find out in early fall. Okay, I believe that is my last slide. So I will stop sharing my screen and uh, we can transition to any questions that might have come up. I would love to, to answer those. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Alan. This is an incredible opportunity for seventh graders out there to receive not only academic support, but engage in social networking and extracurricular activities too, which are all important in preparation for college. So as Alan mentioned, we're going to move on to the question and answer portion of the webinar. So if you have a question that you'd like us to answer, please put it in the chat. I know some of you already have, and we will be sure to get to those right now. And uh, we will also address some questions that the foundation receives frequently. So um, be on the lookout for those. Uh, we'll get to as many questions as we can today. So let's dive on in with our first question. I know someone was wondering if this is going to be recorded. It is. We will go ahead and email you the recording of this webinar and we'll also post it on AVID's YouTube channel. So it will be available in both those places. Um, another question we received was about income and it was, is the AGI a one-time requirement or is that reevaluated throughout the program? For example, if the student's family is 90,000 the student's AGI now is 90,000, but then the parents get a raise in the future. Yeah, great question. So um, we do annually review income. Um, we do not move students out of the program if their income increases past 95,000 during their time in the program. Um, so we, we ask you to let us know so we can be aware. So there's what we have, what we call an annual report that we submit, um, that we request from scholars to submit just so we can be aware. And, and really the reason is because it helps us as you move closer to college, to think about the college scholarship opportunity and how we can be sure and address need when it comes time for that. But you would not be disqualified from the program if you um, had an income that increases over time. Thank you, Alan. And we had a question about tax paperwork. So I, I know you mentioned in the beginning you're you're just having uh, students and families input their their income, just the numbers. Um, but we had a question asking, can I use 2021, 2020, and 2019 tax paperwork to prove income because they are still working on their 2022 taxes? 
Yes, absolutely. So we definitely know folks are still working on taxes right now. So if you haven't done your 2022 taxes yet or, or don't think you'll have those submitted by the end of the application, you can use back to 2019. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. And, and great question. Mm -hmm. So another question we have is, does financial eligibility include combined parent incomes? Yeah, that's a good question too, a very common question. So it does include combined parent income. Um, so, you know, many people have different family dynamics. There may be two households involved. In the case where there are two households involved, what we do is um, we take a portion of the, the non-custodial household. And so it's sort of a formula that we use to calculate. So as you're preparing to submit the application and you're just giving us the sort of self-estimated, do your best there to just say, you know, we're going to be in the range of 95,000 and believe we would be eligible if that's the case. And then again, if you move through the process, we'll ask all of the household, you know, parents to submit information and we'll let you know what portion we'll be calculating in order to determine the eligibility. So in the beginning, you know, sort of go with your gut. If you feel like you're on the cusp, maybe you still want to go for it. If you know, like you'll be well above it, probably wouldn't, you know, be the right choice, but it, it does include all parents. Great. Thank you. So we have a question about the essay and the short answer responses. So what are the responses and essay going to be about? Yeah, that's a good question. So we actually have the essays posted on our website. So you can see exactly what they are. And you also can see if you start the application, you can go to the online portal and see. But to give you just sort of a quick summary, uh, essentially, the questions are directly related to the selection criteria that I mentioned before. So we ask you a question about your academic interests and what you have done to pursue those interests inside the classroom and or outside. We ask you a question about a challenge or an obstacle that you may have faced and how you respond to that. And then we ask you a question about your leadership involvement and how you sort of, you know, demonstrated leadership in your own life. So they almost perfectly align with the criteria. Um, and then the longer essay, there's two options that you have where it, it kind of incorporates a little bit from each of the criteria. Um, and so you could choose which one you prefer to respond to there. Thank you, Alan. Our next question is, some of our students are in AVID, others are in STEAM. Is this program only for AVID students or can any student apply? Any student can apply. So we're fortunate to be able to, to work with AVID in helping us spread the word about this opportunity. It's not exclusive to AVID students. Um, so any student who's eligible and um, wants to pursue the opportunity can submit an application. Absolutely. Great. Uh, another question for you, is seventh grade the only entry point to the program? Yes, it is. So that's really important to know. Um, so the, the one sort of uh, tricky spot with that is some students may have skipped the grade. Uh, and so we do have students that are, for example, currently in sixth grade and know that they're planning to skip seventh and go straight to eighth. So in that particular situation, you could still apply as a sixth grader. But um, if you're currently in seventh grade, now is the time because by the time you become an eighth grader, unfortunately, you can't apply for the program at that point. So it, it needs to be seventh grade year. Thank you. And how many students receive the scholarship each year? Mm -hmm. Great question. So we take between 50 and 70 new students into the program each year. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a selective program, um, but, you know, I like to encourage people to apply and give yourself the opportunity, especially if it sounds appealing to you and it sounds like something that you feel like you would be a good fit for you. Give yourself that opportunity by applying because, um, you know, and the other thing I'll say is that even students who maybe aren't selected but go through the application process, gain a lot by going through the application process because 
it, um, you know, it's preparation for many other applications that you're going to have coming down the line. And it allows you to develop, you know, a better relationship with teachers, potentially uh, work on your writing skills, all these different things that I think are really a benefit um, to a student to practice at a young age. So consider that, um, but also give, you chance, give yourself a chance to get it if you're interested. I agree 100%, Alan. Mm -hmm. Getting those letters of recommendation at an early age is a, a great practice to get into. So I 100% I, I agree. <laughs> yeah. uh, so our next question is, what, what criteria are you evaluating when you review applications? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so again, the three main criteria are going to be your academic achievement. So we're going to look at that report card. We're going to see A's and B's, and we're also going to see the courses that you've taken. Um, we're going to be looking at the teacher recommendations also to understand your academic achievement. So your teachers may talk about things that you've done in class, projects, et cetera. Um, so we'll definitely use those things to determine your academic achievement. And then the leadership through your activities and through your essays and the persistence as well through your essay writing. So academics, leadership, and persistence. Great. We have time for one last question. And that is, is there an interview component to the application process? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. So yes, there is. Um, again, similar to our process for evaluating the financials, um, the interview does not apply to everyone who submits an application. So you don't have to worry about that in submitting your application. But as we begin our review process, we do start to think about who we want to talk to to potentially invite to join the program. And so those students do get interviewed. And that happens in the summer. So, you know, we will reach out via email if we, we know that we want you to be a part of the interview process and you'll have plenty of time to, to prepare for that. But yeah, that is a component towards the end. Great, great. Mm -hmm. Well, we have one minute left of our webinar today. And as we wrap up, I wanted to thank you all for joining us and for your great questions. And I wanted to send a special thanks to my co-host, Alan, and the team at the Jack Kent Cook Foundation who make the Young Scholars Program possible. If you have questions, please visit the Jack Kent Cook Foundation's FAQ page or reach out to me or the Jack Kent Cook team. We've included that information in the chat. And if you're looking for additional application help, the Center for Talent Development at Northwestern University is hosting an online workshop specifically for AVID educators and families on March 21st and March 29th. They'll be going over the application and answering any questions you may have. So we really encourage you to attend and we've put the workshop information in the chat. So don't forget, the application closes May 11th. So teachers and parents, please encourage your students to start their applications today. And students, good luck. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you all, all so much.